Hello, and welcome to Jumpin' Johnny Gaming. This Agatha Christie in the ABC Murders video shows how to complete your first visit to Churchton, and this is a continuation of the good playthrough. You start in your house, and even though you've done it in the last chapter, every time you're in your house, in order to unlock the achievement or trophy, for interacting with every mirror, you need to do it again, as it counts as a different mirror. Then pick up the torn envelope by the door. Head to the small table by the sofa and interact with both newspapers. Then interact with the telephone on the main desk. Daily Flicker, July 30, 19... Daily Flicker, July the 26th, 1935. It is not a good time. Hello, Jap. We received a new letter from AB. Talk to Hastings and pick the option, point out that order is essential. Then zoom in on the bath towel, pajamas, toothpaste, bottles and socks. Hastings, what you are doing is an absolute disaster. That is no way to pack suitcases. Heavens, we must hurry. We have to get to Churston before the murder. These things, order and method are always necessary, regardless of the circumstances. Okay, okay. I'll let you pack them. All the same, it really is a disgrace to leave your belongings in such a mess. Voila! It only took a minute. Investigate the bookshelf that you will be next to after the cutscene, and investigate both books and then turn them around. Then head to the main desk, and like you did in the previous chapter, is to examine the two letters, and it's a bit fiddly clicking the right ones. You have to click on the capital I, A, and a small W in both letters, and do it one at a time. Hastings' photo album. He is very proud of his bag. Right, let us compare this new letter with the second one. Let us examine this more closely. Hmm, the W is not printed properly. Of course! The W characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Yes, this eye is weird. Yes, the eye characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. That's right. The A characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. 
pick letter C was sent at the right date and piece of envelope with the wrong address. Then pick up the phone. I have some news from Churchton. Bad. Investigate the body and investigate in between his legs, the book, and as usual, turn it around, his throat and the blood splatter. Apart from the wound to the throat, the body isn't touched. No cuts, no bruises. An ABC guide, the murderer's customary signature, covered in blood this time. Sir Carmichael's throat was cut. It's a clean incision, a professional murder. The gravel on the path has been sprayed with blood that covers a conical shape to Rhea, which starts at the body and becomes wider as it moves further from the bush. Investigate the objects on the blue material next to the body. Every object you have to turn it until Pyro makes his observation for it to count. And has laid out their contents on this piece of wax cloth. It is pointless. A signet ring, very probably with the Clark family's coat of arms. An oriental dragon. It's an old piece, much older than the pocket watch on which it was fastened. Nothing appears to be missing from this wallet. Investigate the rock with the seagull on it and zoom in on the rock with the seagull on it, the blue flowers and the small rabbit hole. It's very calming. The site is exceptional. It is easy to imagine that Sir Carmichael used to enjoy stopping here every evening. Investigate the bush at the bottom left and the trampled grass next to it. The body is just in front of a bush. One of the only bushes in the surrounding area. The vegetation behind the bush has been trampled. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Pick the options. There is a wound with a clear outline. The zone soiled with blood covers a conical shaped area and the body was found in front of the only bush. Pick the options, the victim had his back to the bush, the victim only had one wound, and trampled grass behind the bush. I am certain of one thing. During the cutscene, pick the dialogue, the murder was carefully planned, and the murder was very violent. He must have known Sir Carmichael's movements well to plan such an attack. 
The murderer struck with terrible savagery. Yeah. Head left so you can enter the house. Observe the man opposite you and zoom in on his face, his shoulders and his tie. There is something very viril about him. Franklin Clark is an adventurer, the sort of man that women like. Observe the woman at the table and zoom in on her makeup, her dragon brooch, and her clothes. Elegant about her. She has good taste, except perhaps in a choice of jewellery. Talk to Franklin and choose the following dialogue. Be understanding, point out that Thora is a suspect, and ask what his favourite book is. Of course, I understand. Someone set a trap for your brother. Who was familiar with his habits? Everybody knew he took his evening walk at half past eight, and that he always followed the same path. Everybody, including Miss Grey? What are you insinuating? Thor would never. I mean, Miss Grey is above all suspicion. You're quite wrong, I'm absolutely certain. What were you doing last night? After dinner, I went to my bedroom. At 11 in the evening, the telephone rang. It was the police. I went to look for my brother. Was it your favorite novel? The Railway Children by Edith Nesbitt. I know it's a children's book, but it's enthralling. So it was you who found the body? Yes, along with the gardener. Have you seen any strangers around the house recently? No. As far as I know, nobody has been near the house. Examine the table and investigate all four green circle symbols and the middle symbol. This is for the upcoming puzzle, and this is what the placements of the puzzle should be. Also, investigate the book and the teapot. Comside's private collection. Purchases since 1920. The catalog for Sir Carmichael Clark's collection. A crane? It is an emperor. His place at the center of the table is probably symbolic. A turtle. Dragon, dragon, dragon. Sir Carmichael showed himself to be very consistent in his collection's theme. A dragon. Where Hastings is standing guard, investigate the poster on the wall and zoom in on the panel above the door, the dragon statue and the picture on the wall. Dragon, dragon, dragon. 
Sir Carmichael showed himself to be very consistent in his collection's theme. Investigate the cabinet to the right of the fireplace and find out it's locked and then investigate the bookcase for a puzzle. Zoom in on the puzzle at the bottom middle shelf and interact with it. Turn it so the bird is at the top and each picture has got a dot. Turn it so the dot is facing the dragon. Do this with all four symbols. The position of each motif is correct, but they are not turned the same way as on the table. Then interact with the bottom right wooden knob and turn it so the colour matches the bottom picture, which is black. Then move the top right so it matches the colour on the right picture, which is a cream colour. And then finally move the top left so the top picture is red and the left picture is blue and a secret opening will open. I think I heard a bang. Could it be this cupboard? This is interesting. Investigate the set of knives and the letter. These daggers are only ceremonial weapons. I do not think that the crime weapon is here. Ernest Logan, MD Brighton Concert. Observe Miss Grey again and zoom in on her eyes, lips and her chest area. She appears to be very flustered. She's unable to hide her emotion and her makeup has been disturbed. I think that this young woman has just been kissed. Here? Teapot with black dragon, Gangshi period, end of the 17th century. It is a rare piece with unusual colors. You have a good knowledge of art history. Acquired while working with Sir Carmichael. I used to help him manage his collection, and choose his new acquisitions. Talk to Miss Grey and pick the following dialogue options. Ask her if he give her gifts, mention her brooch, ask if the gift annoyed Lady Clark, ask her if Lady Clark is jealous, ask for her version of the facts, ask if she's in a relationship with Franklin, and finally, as for confirmation that she kissed Franklin. You were wearing earlier. Yes, you're right. Sir Carmichael did give it to me. He valued my work. How could I refuse? He would have been offended. You took it off because of Lady Clark, am I right? Indeed. Lady Clark does not like this jewel. Why upset someone who is so gravely ill? I see. Maybe Lady Clark is. A little jealous. Mr. Poirot, do not be mistaken. There was nothing going on between Sir Carmichael Clark and myself. It's just... How should I say? Well, Lady Clark is very suspicious. Insanely suspicious. 
Wearing this old brooch in front of her would have caused her unnecessary suffering. Don't you think? I am not blaming you, mademoiselle. Have you seen any strangers hanging around in the past few days? No. Nobody has been near Comside. Tell me what happened last night. After dinner? Well, I did some sewing and then I went to bed. I was woken by the telephone at 11. I heard Franklin Clark speaking with the gardener. They left with some lanterns and they found the body. Am I right thinking that something is going on between you and Franklin? How dare you ask me such a question? Mademoiselle, it is difficult to hide things from me. He kissed you earlier, did he not? My goodness, with Sir Carmichael's death, I was feeling so awful, so worried. I was unable to resist. I am not judging you, mademoiselle. At the reconstruction, pick the following options. Wait, admire, attack from the right, and cut throat. Hiding behind a bush. The old man walks quietly along the gravel path. Then he turns towards the sea to gaze at it. The killer leaves his hiding place on the right hand side. He approaches silently over the grass. Then he throws himself on his prey and cuts the poor man's throat. He then lays down the ABC before leaving. Everything appears to match the crime scene, Monsha Hastings. That is exactly what happened. Investigate the two women on the right sofa, then the inspector and Hastings. Talking to Hastings counts as the investigation. Sometimes I love a brunette, sometimes I love a blonde. That's what the song says. The song says, sometimes I love a blonde who comes from Eden by way of Sweden. But I am not sure that this blonde is an angel. Franklin Clark always seems at ease, regardless of where he is. Something that's unique to people who travel. I hope to concentrate on my guests. Then observe Donald on the left and zoom in on his eyes, the cut on his face and his left hand. Donald is always on edge. Leave me alone. Donald Fraser is very nervous at the moment, even if he's trying hard to control himself. Observe the woman next to Donald and zoom in on the eyes, earring and the necklace.
She's looking at Mr. Fraser out of the corner of her eye. Did she make herself beautiful for him? I wish to thank you all for coming. Pick the following dialogue options. Ask Megan the reason for this meeting. Tell Donald to get a grip on himself. And ask Megan why Betty didn't say anything. You are an intelligent woman, Mademoiselle Barnard, and I'm sure that you have already understood my intentions. You think that if we put our heads together, we might come up with something new? I am convinced of it. What I ask is that you search your memories. The murderer must have left some trace. Yes, he must have prepared his crimes very carefully. Tout à fait. He did not get to Bexhill at midnight in order to strangle a young girl whose name, by chance, starts with P. Must we go into that? Mr. Fraser, please get a grip on yourself. Well, I want to help you, but... I don't remember anything else. Nothing I haven't already said. And you, Mademoiselle Barnard? Did your sister say she was seeing another man? She never would have told me. Why would she hide the fight from you? Betty knew I didn't approve of her behavior. Her flirting was spoiling any chance she might have had. Tell me, Mademoiselle, what did you talk about with your sister? Silly things. Her new dress. She wanted a pair of black stockings to go with it. Mother bought her a brand new pair. The day it happened, she was crying. And to think that Betty never even wore them. Poor mummy. Your sister used to sing, I believe. Did she ever perform in public? She dreamt about it, but she had a very bad cough. It troubled her greatly. She had to cancel auditions and miss lots of opportunities. A pity. Yes, she sang well, but that doesn't tell us much about the murderer. Qui sait? In any case, we now have enough information to draw up a relatively precise psychological profile. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Pick the option, you will see that the murderer carried it out to perfection. Pick the option, killed, when the street was packed with people. Pick the option, the man seduced Betty. Pick the option, a passenger timetable. Pick the option, the killer is methodical and prepares his crimes meticulously. Pick the option, without the ABC, we might have suspected Mr. Asker and Mr. Fraser. So, ladies and gentlemen, we can now surmise without too much risk of error that our adversary is calculative. Pick the following dialogue, ask Mary what is bothering her. That he has plenty of self-control and that he likes railways. It's a good start. Other meetings may be necessary. I hope that you will be able to come back again. Well, it's just that... <sighs> Is something bothering you, Mary? Well, Mr. Poirot, you see, I don't know if I can come to London. Pick the following options. Mrs. Archer took cough medicine, Betty had problems with her voice, and Clark was a famous doctor.
If you like this video, subscribe to my channel, where there are more story-based choice and consequences games with walkthroughs plus achievement and trophy guides, secrets and tips from the latest releases to retro games. Thanks for watching.